If you're anything like me and into action and VFX, you'll probably need to put sparks into your scene at some point. Whether it's for lightsaber clashes, bullet impacts, or explosions, you need that extra little spice to make your effects more realistic and grounded. Today we're going to be creating this effect in Blender. A good start for making any effect is looking at reference material. In this case, I'm making a bullet impact, so let's look at references for that. Okay, so it's unrealistic to have a lot of spark to jump off on impact with a normal bullet, but it looks cool, and maybe it's a real gun. You're going to want to start by adding in an icosphere. This is going to be our emitter for our sparks. Think of it as the point where an impact takes place or the metal meets a grindstone. Ideally, you'll want to create the emitter to the size of where the sparks emit from in real life, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can play around with the measuring tool or find the dimensions in the transform panel. Delete any faces you don't need and keep the ones that should emit the sparks. Apply the scale with Control-A. In the particle tab, add a particle system. Here you can adjust your particle count or how many sparks you want. I set mine to 300. Start and end values are how long the particles will emit for. You can also adjust the lifetime, basically how many frames the particles are visible. The random value is exactly what it sounds like. Lifetime randomness. Kind of like how your life has a random amount of time. The velocity normal is how fast your particles will explode from your emitter. This is where the object scale might be important to get correct because the velocity will look different depending on that. These are the values I set, but it's all about what works for your scene. I found it was helpful to set the scene frames to about the end of the lifetime of the sparks so that you don't end up playing more frames than you need. At this point, they're only dull looking spheres rendering and we want some sparks. So what do we do? Add another icosphere. Take it off into the distance so it won't be visible in the render. Add a material and make it emission. Give it a color and crank that brightness. Now add in a displacement modifier and select a cloud texture. This will make the spark instance look less like a boring CG render and more like a fragment of burning metal. Go into edit mode and duplicate it a bunch. Apply the modifier, go back into edit mode and select everything, then separate the mesh with P selecting by loose parts. Make sure to right click and set origin to geometry too so that the scaling will work correctly. Now I want to add that to a collection by hitting M and new collection. Give it a name and there we go. If we go to the render collection in the particle tab of the emitter and select our collection, it will instance the collection we made. You can use the scale and randomize values to get better looking results. Uncheck the show emitter in the render section. Make sure to bake the cache before you render to avoid artifacts. Turn on a motion blur and make sure bloom is enabled and Eevee will do the rest. If you want to take it a step further, you can vary the hue and brightness of the sparks by making all the materials single user and changing them. or using a noise texture controlled by a color ramp hooked up to a UV map. If you use cycles, you can get a more realistic render and control how the sparks age. You can do that by hooking up a particle info node to a math node, set it to divide and plugging in the age and lifetime with the colors on the left being the birth and the right being the death of the particles. You can also add a glow in the compositor with the glare node but Eevee can give you a pretty good result by itself. Just depends on which you prefer the look of. You can add further complexity by adding more particle systems to the emitter. And that's pretty much it. With some tracking and compositing, you can get a shot that looks like this. This method is a good start to making really any spark effect you want. So get out there and make something cool. Until the next one, this is VFExpert. I'll be seeing you.